boys and girls, and welcome to Faith Flight School. I'm Captain Tyler. Here at Faith Flight School, we learn about the Word of God and how to be doers of it. When we're doers of God's Word and what He shows us to do, we will receive all the benefits and all the blessings that God has for us. Last time here at Faith Flight School, we talked about how the Good Shepherd leads us through the inward witness through the still small voice on the inside. If you didn't see that, I encourage you to go back and watch it. It's still available. Today we're going to continue talking about the Good Shepherd and how when, when he leads us, it'll be light and easy. Are you ready to get started? Let's head to the hangar for some praise and worship. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones 
All right, this next song, we're gonna be moving around a little bit. You can follow Miss April and I's lead. We're gonna be kind of walking around, tapping our toes, a little dancing for this song. Sing, I walk. And I walk by faith each step. Does anybody remember that verse? Has that been a verse we've heard recently? Yeah? What does this verse say? Does anybody, does anybody know it without me telling him? All right, when I start saying it, you're all going to know it. This is the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Have you all heard that before? I knew it. I knew it. Okay, so who is the good shepherd? Jesus is the good shepherd, right? And he's the one that wants to take care of us. And he wants us to have, what did that verse say? I shall not want. So there are lots of things that we could want, right? There are a lot of things out there that people are in want. They need healing. They need uh, grace. They need peace. You know anybody that needs peace? I know I've met lots of people that had no peace in their life. And you know what? God has peace. He has the only peace. And he wants to give it out because he's the good shepherd. So I have something here. Anybody can know what this is? It's a sponge, but it's not just a sponge. Can you notice anything else about the sponge? It's hard. It's hard. It's really hard and it's really dry. You know what this sponge is? This sponge is in want. What do you think it wants? Water. Chocolate? No. No? Oh, okay. Water. What does it want? Water. Water. Okay, so we've got our, our, our sponge here. I'm going to put it in here. What does it need? Water. It's in want of water. water. Okay, so this water is going to represent all of the things that God has provided for us as the Good Shepherd. We talked about some of them already. Healing, peace, salvation, that you know exactly where you're going to spend eternity, all those things. So if we start to put this in here, what's happening? Do you see a difference? 
Yeah, there's a difference. Is it still in want? Do you know how we can tell? We're going to be able to tell here pretty soon. Does, is it still in want? Does it need more? Okay. So we're going to pour some more of God's blessings on there. Oh, do you see what's happening? It's expanding and it's growing. Do you see that? Can you guys see that? I'll pick it up and show it to you again in a second. All right, what about now? Is it still in want? It is still in want. Do you know how we can tell? First of all, they're dry corners. But when a sponge is not in want and it's full, what does it start to do? It starts dripping and leaking. So if we put the rest of this in here, now what happens? If I pick it up now, what's going to happen? Okay, so does God want us to have just enough just so that we aren't dry and squeaky? No. He's the good shepherd. What does a good shepherd want us to have? All of the good things. And when we're full and we're not in want, then what do we do with all that extra? What can we do with it now that we have extra? We can give it to somebody else. That was a great answer. So I've got another verse for you. We're going to go again in our manuals to 2 Corinthians 9, 7. You all have heard this one before too. And I got it in the right place. Okay, so let each one give. Now, who do you suppose that each one is? That would be me and you, right? Each one of the people in the church. It says, each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly. What does grudgingly mean? I don't really want to, but okay. Have you ever given something where you could almost hear it creaking? Your hand creaking when it goes out? That's not how we're supposed to give? Not according to this verse. It says, not grudgingly or of necessity where somebody made you. For God loves a cheerful giver. Now, so anytime we're talking about something to do with God, there's our part and there's God's part. So what is our part according to this verse? What is our part? We're supposed to give cheerfully because we want to. It comes from our heart, right? So we bring our gift and we give cheerfully. And then what does God do? What's his part? He does all the blessings blessings, and then we don't have any want, right? And then we're able to share with other people. So we want to believe God that he will provide for us everything that we want, right? So we're not in any kind of want, right? All right. Emily, are you ready? We need to go to the store. Yeah, Grandpa, I'm coming. Hey, Grandpa, Uh do you think that after we go to the store, we could go get milkshakes at Dairyland? Well, of course. It's one of the best things about going to town, don't you think? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's go. Okay. Oh, good morning, Tom. Morning, Jeb. Um, um, excuse me, sir, but, um, his name is Grandpa. Oh! oh. <laughs> well, my mistake, young lady. Uh, excuse me then, uh, Grandpa, are you here for some more feed for your sheep? Sure am. I want to stock up for a few weeks. Have you got anything new? Oh, I got a new brand then you might like. Follow me. Okay. And we got these over here, half price. Wow, there sure are a lot of options of what to feed sheep. Hmm. What you think? Uh, no thank you. (laughs) This one may be a lower price, but I don't think it's the best for my sheep. You know, now that I think about it, I'll take 10 of my regular and 10 for the lambs. All righty, I'll have the boys put 10 bags of the usual and 10 bags of the lamb feed on the truck and send it out to you this afternoon. Anything else I can do for you? Well, actually, now that you mention it, I need some wire to fix a feeder. Oh, what gauge? Uh, I'll take that 12 gauge over there. Okay, we can do that. You want me to add it to the order or send it with you now? Go ahead and add it to the order and that'll be it. Okie dokie, put it on your tab. Be seated, Tom. All right. Thank you, Jeb. Hey, Grandpa, is it time for milkshakes yet? It sure is, kiddo. Let's go. Mmm. 
This strawberry shake is delicious. Mine is too. Oh, thank you, Grandpa. Well, you're welcome, darling. Grandpa, um, how did you know what kind of wire to pick at the store? Well, I knew the kind of wire I needed. I measured before I left the farm this morning. I also know that if it's too small, the sheep can get the tips of their noses through it, and it leaves a hole, so I have to get the right one. Hmm, and what about the food? Why didn't you just buy the food that's on sale? Well, I look at several things. I don't want my sheep to lack for any good thing. Each bag offers various benefits. Some help older sheep, some help lambs grow, some are for the winter, some are for the summer. Each sheep needs different things, and I want all my sheep to have what they need. I want to make sure to get the right food so none of the sheep lack nutrition and minerals and stay healthy. Hmm. Well, it sure seems like a lot of work to take good care of the sheep. No wonder they trust you, Grandpa. You know, kiddo, I always want to make sure my sheep have all they need. I'm their provider and protector, so I want to provide for them in the best way. The Good Shepherd does this for his sheep, too. And even though I want to make sure my sheep are cared for, our Good Shepherd wants that for his sheep even more. Wow, God loves us so much. And he never wants us to lack for any good thing, right? That's right. Well, I'm so glad we have a good shepherd like that, Grandpa. Me too, Emily. Hey boys and girls, are you ready to do confessions? Me too. Let's stand up because we got a few actions. The first one goes like this. Repeat after me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Very good. Okay, here we go. This one has some actions. Do it with me. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. Good looking. Very rich and a major blessing. Good job. All those things are true. You guys know that? Yes. All right, let's do our doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the Word of God. Very good. Now get your Bibles out. You can go and grab it. I'll wait for you. <clears throat> All right, everybody have theirs? Let's hold it up. Say, This is my Bible. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. And I can be what God says I can be. Very good. All right, so we are gonna start out with a history quiz. Not really, but I am gonna ask you a question and see if you know something about a piece of history. So are you guys ready? I'm about to show it to you. Are you ready? Okay. I need to know if anybody knows what this is. Okay, I'm gonna turn slowly so everybody has an opportunity to look at it. Does anybody know what that is? This is a yoke. Does anybody know what a yoke is? Oh, no. Okay, a yoke is used to put together two animals so they can pull something together. Has anybody ever seen anything like that? Remember seeing anything like that in your history books maybe? or maybe at a festival. And sometimes you'll see horses are harnessed together and it's because it makes it easier for them to pull. But a yoke is specifically used usually for plowing. And so I have another picture. Are you ready to see that one? Yeah. See what we're talking about? Okay. No. I've actually got a couple of them. All right, has anybody ever seen anything like this? No, I no not really. Because these, these two pictures are actually from other countries because this kind of farming is not done very often in our, in our country. So there's one. Here's another picture with some different kinds of cattle. Now do you guys see the, the yoke goes across and then it goes around their necks and it holds them together because it's easier for them to pull together. And if they were, if they were pulling if they weren't attached together, they'd be pulling in different ways. Would that make it easier? No. Okay, so now we know what a yoke is, right? 
We, we know what a yoke is? Okay, we're not talking about a yo an egg yolk. No, we're talking about a yolk like we use for oxen. Okay, so I've got a couple of, of examples here of a yolk. And so we are gonna, we've got a couple of volunteers that we have selected over here that are gonna come and help us. And so we need a couple of examples here. We're gonna show you, okay, go ahead. Go ahead and you can come stand on this side. We're gonna show you a couple different things. If you can come stand right here so I can reach you. All right, these are not actual yolks, and normally, like we said, a yolk is with two animals, but we're gonna kinda give you an example of what this is like. So we're gonna put this here. You uh, feel that there? Yeah, that has some, some feel to it. What, kind of, what are you feeling right now? Heavy. It feels like a heavy weight. <laughs> okay, so does that look like it'd be heavy? I was actually really surprised. It was a lot heavier than I expected it to be. So can you imagine doing everything you have to do the whole rest of the day or the, all day long with this on there? Would that make your day easier? No? You don't think so? Well, what if we put another person on? Would that make it easier if he was carrying, if somebody else was with you, especially the same height, and he carried part of the weight, you think that would make it easier? Yeah, it would make it easier. Probably still not something I'm signing up for. So I've got another yoke over here, kind of. All right, so here, buddy. What do you think? Does that one, is that one heavy? No. Well, his is heavy. So well, what do you say about this one? Well, it's not really heavy. It's not heavy. What else would you say about it? And it's soft. It's soft. It's maybe a little bit fluffy. Yeah. Yeah? Do you think that you could do everything you need to do with that on? Yep. What if you had somebody to help you? Do you think that would make it even easier? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Okay. All right, so we've got two different examples. If you had to pick a yoke, which one would you pick? This one? Okay, if it's this one, I want you to just say, uh, to clap real quietly. If you think it'd be this one, that'd be easier. I'm not, hearing, I'm not hearing anybody. Okay, what about this one? Okay, all right, all right, all right. So if we had to choose a one, we would pick this one. Okay, so thank you very much for being my contestants in the yoke um, quiz. I don't know what we're talking about. All right. So now we're gonna, we're gonna go to our manual because anytime we're showing you something like this, it's to show you something in here, right? This is what we build our life on. This is what's important. So we're gonna look at a verse. This verse is in Matthew, and it's in Matthew chapter 11. This is actually one of my favorite verses, okay? Matthew chapter 11, verse 29 and 30. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, does anybody know who said this? Anybody? I'll give you a hint if you don't know. Oh, who is it? Jesus. And you know how we can tell? If we didn't know for sure? These letters are red. So red letters mean Jesus is talking, so we should, we should always pay attention to what's in the Bible, but if it's red letters, who should we, should we, our ears should be like, what? What did Jesus say? So he said, Take my yoke on you. So he has a yoke. But it says, and learn to me, I'm gentle. Remember the words that he used to describe this one? He goes, it's light. It's fluffy. It's soft. What did Jesus say about his yoke? He says, it's gentle. He said, you'll, it's easy and my burden is light. So this is the thing. When you go through life, and one thing I know about animals, farm animals, there's a lot of farming in my family background, and when you put farm animals like oxen or cows in a yoke and they're pulling all day, do you know what they do? They drop their heads and they just work and work and work and work and they pull and they pull because it's heavy, right? You have oxen because they make it easier for you, but is it heavy for them? Yeah, it's still heavier. It's not as heavy for them as it'd be for you, but it's still heavy in its work. And they drop their heads and they just get into it and they just work. Now, if we were going to run around with this all day, would this do that to me? Would I be like, oh, if I'm wearing that at work tomorrow, would it be like, oh, I don't know if I can keep doing this? No, this would be fun, right? It's fun to wear that. Okay, well, how you can tell what yoke you're wearing in your life, okay, if you're listening to your flesh and you're letting your flesh drive, and you're wearing the wrong yoke, because the devil has a yoke too. And his yoke is not easy, and it's not light. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Do you know why? Because he's yoked in there with you and he's carrying the weight.
So that was pretty heavy. He was saying, yeah, that was pretty heavy. He wouldn't want to do that all day. What if we put him on there with a big, strong man, and he had to carry it, and he just had to hold the strap? Would that make it easier? Yeah. So Jesus helps carry that weight. That's why there isn't a weight for us. Jesus takes the weight of it, because he's already paid the price for us, right? So the way we can tell in our life whose yoke we have on is... Is it feeling heavy? Is it feeling light? Are you going through your life or you're going through your day and you're getting discouraged and everything seems hard? Have you ever had a day like that? I have. I'm like, why does it seem like everything I'm going to do is, is hard? Well, whose direction have you been listening to? Is you been listening to the flesh? Just doing what you want to do? Or have you been following what the Word of God says? The Word of God says to walk in love and be kind to people. But if you're not, that can make your day a lot harder, can it? You ever notice that? I sure have. So, Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light, but we have to listen to him and let him be our good shepherd, right? We're looking for his direction. We're looking for what he has to say to us, right? So if we find that uh, we're getting droopy and we're, getting, we're feeling like this is stressful and this is hard, we need to go, wait a minute, where's my good shepherd? He's been talking to me and he's going to make it light, so I need to go to the good shepherd and get my direction from him. So whose yoke are we going to choose? We're going to choose the devil's that's hard or Jesus that's light and easy? Jesus! That's right. Let's follow our Good Shepherd. Hi, boys and girls. We're going to continue hiding God's Word in our hearts. Isn't it wonderful learning all about our Good Shepherd in Psalm 23? Have you been practicing what you've learned so far? Oh, that's so good. Let's do it together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Oh, wonderful, you did so good. Let's learn the next line. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Say it with me. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Nice. Still waters means the sheep have plenty to drink. When the waters are still, it's very peaceful. Our Good Shepherd always leads us with His peace. He does not lead us by pressure or fear or worry. We can know our Good Shepherd because he, His ways are always peaceful and calm. Restore means to make new again. Have you ever watched a show where they go into an old house that is falling apart and they fix the house so it looks brand new? The house looks brand new because it's been restored. When the Lord restores our soul, it means Jesus took every bad thing that has ever happened to us and he heals us so we are not marked or hurt by it anymore. Now that you know more about the first, let me show you the actions. He leads me beside the still waters. Put your hands next to each other and move them up and down like water. He restores my soul. Place your hands in a fist and put them at your chest. Now, stand up and let's do that together. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Oh, that was very good. Okay, so now we're going to put everything together that we learned. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Oh, that was very good. It's so fun learning Psalm 23 together with you. Keep practicing and I'll see you next week. Boys and girls, are you fully persuaded that what God did is true? Yeah, everything that he said he did came to pass, and he sent his son Jesus to save us. Now, if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, you can do that right now. You don't have to wait a second longer. 
So if you'd like to do that, just close your eyes and say this prayer with me and you'll be saved. Say, Father God, I believe in you. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross. I believe he rose again and he's alive right now in heaven with you. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Amen. Well, praise God. That's one of the best decisions you can ever make. And your life can get only better from here. Did you guys enjoy that lesson? I know I sure did. I really enjoy listening to Grandpa talk to Emily about how a good shepherd takes care of his sheep. It really makes me think about how God takes good care of us, his sheep, right? Do you remember the picture of the oxen that had that yoke on their neck? Well, if we're ever in a place where it feels heavy like that or yoked, that's because we're listening to our and following our flesh. But when we follow the Holy Spirit, our Good Shepherd, who lives inside of us, it'll be light and easy, and He'll always lead us to what's best for us. Because He's a Good Shepherd. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us. I'm Captain Tyler, and I'll see you next time.